I am a sucker for dorky little animated graphics. I mean, come on, these are just fun. You're a f nerd, Jake. So what does it take to make a graphic that's kind of boring go to fun and interesting? Today, we are going to break it down step by step and turn an animation from this into this. It is subtle, but it makes a huge difference. Now today we are doing this in DaVinci Resolve, showing these concepts in the edit page and the fusion page. However, these concepts apply to all editing software and there's definitely ways to do this in Final Cut. Now, before we get to the sauce, the first thing we need is a simple animated movement. And essentially this is keyframing 101. We want to take a graphic from point A to point B. This is the backbone of our animation. In the edit page, this requires you to make keyframes on the transform section of your inspector. Go to the point where you want to start and set point A. Then go however many frames you want the movement or animation to last and click another keyframe. And then at each keyframe, adjust the position or zoom to match whatever you want the animation or movement to be. On the fusion page, the process is very similar. Add a new transform node to your media node and do a similar exercise, adjusting the position and size at each keyframe that you create similar concept, different page. Now at this point, this is where a lot of people probably make an animation and go, why does this still look so amateur? And well, that's the next set of steps, which we're gonna discuss. Because movement alone isn't enough to make a good looking animation. First step, easing our movements. First things first, we need to ease the movements. Now this in general just makes everything look so much more natural and is a huge first step in a good animation. On the edit page, it's actually really simple. We just need to go to the first keyframe, right click on the keyframe and select ease out. And then we do something similar on the second keyframe, right click and select ease in. And this smooths the movement in a couple of clicks. In Fusion, we can do something similar, but what we have to do is select each of the keyframes in our spline window and select curve. The curved option just allows us to have kind of a handle in the spline editor to then and smooth out the first and second keyframe and make it look exactly like what we got on the edit page. It's that simple. Step number two, no stagnation. This one is huge and very subtle, but makes a ginormous difference in your animations. In the edit page, you need to add an effect called camera shake. Now out of the gate, this effect is way too heavy handed and you gotta dial it back. So simply just dial down the motion scale and speed scale and it will suddenly look much more natural which is what we want. We want it to be more chill. For the Fusion page, it's the same effect. Just add a new downstream node for camera shake. The sliders are slightly different here, but you're going to also want to dial these back as well for the same reasons. Now, the reason this is so important and why I love this effect so much is it just makes the animation feel less robotic and less sort of corporate per se. It feels a lot more natural, feels more organic, and again, just adds life to our elements that we are animating. The next step is motion blur. Motion blur is a critical part of this whole process. And for example, just look at my hand, look at it move on the screen. I'll do a pause of one of these frames. There's motion blur happening all of the time in normal video making, you know, like this. Therefore, in our animations, we want to try to mimic that again because it just looks more real and it looks more natural. Now, in the edit page, there's not a fantastic way to do this. So we're actually going to start in Fusion because it's a little bit easier. And then I'll show you my workaround for the edit page. In Fusion, it's as easy as, again, adding one additional node to our existing node and in the node is motion blur. It's very straightforward. Dial it back, we don't want too much. Again, this is just like all the other effects. By default, they're way too heavy handed and just a little bit goes a long way. Okay, so now let's go back to the edit page. For this, my workaround has been to throw an adjustment layer on top of the movement section of my graphic. And then typically I drag the beginning and end to ease in this effect. And the effect that I use is called directional blur. Now, again, this isn't exactly motion blur, but it gets the same kind of job done. While the object is moving, it actually blurs the object and makes it look like it has motion blur. It's kind of a cheesy workaround, but in my experience, again, if done subtly, it works fine, it looks great. The one hiccup you might run into if you do the adjustment clip is it will impact everything below it. So if you have like a background or something, you want to put this directional blur clip 
on the actual graphic itself and then just use the overall blend to again do what we did with the adjustment clip and ease it in and out to only apply when the movement is happening. Just follow those transform keyframes from earlier and you should be in great shape. Coffee break. The next and super critical piece is sound design. Simple, but arguably just as important as all of the rest. Sound design sells animations. I like to use clicks, keyboard rattles, newspaper rustles, and whooshes for my movement to really just make these animations feel, again, like they are coming from the real world. Real objects in real life make noise, therefore the things that are happening in our animations should make noise as well, and just blends it right into the video to make it feel so much more a part of the real world. The next effect is drop shadow. Now this one's a little bit subjective and maybe it won't work for every type of situation, but adding a drop shadow effect to your graphics again, kind of like sound design, makes them have a 3D feel and it makes them feel like they're actually a part of whatever the video is. And again, it just adds to that overall enhancement of making it feel like this is something that is happening in the real world. This one's super easy to add in the edit page. It's just an effect that you can put on your graphic element and then dial it to taste. And the same thing on the fusion page. This is just another node to add downstream from your graphic itself. And again, it's just going to sell that 3D effect. The last one is camera movement or punch-ins more specifically. I have typically found that in order to make a graphic really engaging, it helps to throw a final adjustment layer on top of whatever it is you're doing and add maybe a punch-in or camera shake or some other type of animation movement on top of your specific animations to again enhance or add to the animation that you've created. Let's look at a quick little example. Say I was to pop up onto screen like we've been doing so far, but then say maybe a chat bubble was to appear with me saying something. In order to enhance kind of that second phase of the animation, I want to put a punch in when the chat bubble appears. And again, it's just going to create a much more engaging and exciting flow for these animations. This is exactly like our first example, except for instead of animating the X, Y position, just animate the zoom. Usually I'm going from about one to 1.2, 1.3, and easing in both of those zoom keyframes. And if at the end of the punch in, maybe something isn't centered or you want to adjust that, the best way I've found is to adjust the anchor points because at zoom one, it leaves everything how it should look. And then as it punches in, it adjusts the movement as well. Super slick, super easy way to do this that looks really nice and just totally adds to your animation. And with all of those steps, you are well on your way to making fantastic graphical animations in DaVinci Resolve. Thank you to all of our members who support this channel and make this channel possible. You guys are the best. Also to those of you who aren't members, members do get exclusive, more in-depth course type stuff from me that isn't quite as YouTube algorithm friendly. And uh, definitely click down below to become a Jake Felzine member. Alrighty, see you guys in the next one.